Dyer Island. Eight kilometers off the coast of Hansby, South Africa. Home to some of the country's most diverse and varied marine wildlife. And the worldwide capital of the Great White Shark. They attract tourists and nature lovers in the thousands. But how many are actually here? And what does this mean for the species globally? These are just some of the important questions that the Dyer Island Conservation Trust answers with its pioneering great white shark research. Attempting to gauge how threatened they really are. I always knew that there were many great white sharks in the Hanspai area just because of the fact that we started to do serious spearfishing around the island in the early 1980s. Wilfred Chivel is the founder of the Dyer Island Conservation Trust. He is also the director of local dive company Marine Dynamics Shark Tours who fund the trust's research. I met them um, Michael Skoll in the late 90s and he was doing a study on the great white sharks dorsal fin study and that was very interesting to me. He never finished his study unfortunately but when I bought the shark age diving boat I immediately know that we, um, we should do something like that. Obviously this area is the white shark capital of the world undisputedly and um, we took thousands of fin photos for the next few years without ever having somebody that can really do something with it. In 2007, the Trust began recruiting a team of international scientists with a view to performing vital research in this unique coastal region. One of the first researchers to join the Trust was Alison Town. When I arrived in this area, there was very few studies ongoing with population estimates of white sharks. In fact, there was nothing in the literature and most studies that were happening were very much in limbo. So the trust decided this was something that we needed to um, get going. The team spent over five years collecting dorsal fin IDs, providing them with the data they would need to calculate an estimate of the local population. So with all of the photographs that we collected, we then started to catalogue the unique dorsal fins of each shark in order to identify individuals. When animal behaviourist Michelle Weissel joined the team in 2010, her first task was to figure out the best way of processing this data. I'm originally from the States, but I moved to Hansby three years ago in order to pursue a master's degree, which I've just completed at the University of Cape Town on Cape Fur Seal anti-predator decisions within a very dynamic ecosystem around Giza Rock and Dyer Island. From this point, to identify the fins, we used a program called Darwin. You, you really can't imagine the, the joys and excitement involved of working with Darwin. Designer and research assistant Ed joined the team to help with this part of the process. I mean, I love sharks, but my, my experience is more in creative, so branding, web, 3D and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'm very well accustomed to sitting in front of a screen and feeling my brain and soul slowly die. So it's perfect for this job. Darwin actually makes a tedious, soul-destroying exercise very accessible and user-friendly. So we collect the photographs that the field team have taken and put that into the system and then trace a line around the shape of the fin. We then hit a magic button and the system does its best to match that trace with others it already has saved in its database. What it then does is list all of the fins that are in the database according to how similar they are to the one we've just imported. So we then sit there and check each one by one to confirm manually. Of course though, things never stay simple for very long. The shape of a shark fin might change over time. These are scenarios where things start to get interesting. And by interesting, what I suppose I really mean is more like a, a nightmare in hell. 
Yeah. In these instances, what we have to do is sit there, check every single fin one by one, and use details outside of the main area of change to assess whether or not there's a match. So really, overall, it's, it's the process that's the hard work. The software makes it as easy for you as it can. But when you are on one of those tricky fins, and it can take anywhere up to 90 minutes to get a match, and you know it has a match. You know there's a match in there, but it's, it's hiding. Just to make your life that little bit more difficult. When you're on your 10th of those for the day, it takes its toll. I used to look like Johnny Depp. One week of Darwin, and need I say more? This software allowed the team to calculate an estimate of the local population. The first from Southern Africa, and one of very few in the world. Previously, unpublished research in Kwanzbai suggested that there may be as many as two to three thousand individuals in this bay alone. Using five years worth of dorsal fin data, we were able to identify 532 individual white sharks in the bay over that time period. With a population estimate less than half of what other researchers have predicted, the trust attention had turned to assessing what this means for the species at large and what course of action must be taken. When you consider how low the number from our study is, you look at previous um, population estimates and the fact that they didn't have automated software to assist, it could be possible that previous estimates were exaggerated and that's a worrying prospect. In 1991, South Africa changed shark conservation forever when it became the first country to declare the white shark a protected species. Our estimate suggests that white sharks may not be rebounding from the fishing pressure that they experienced prior to their protection in 1991. Now that our regional estimate is done, we're contributing our data set to the first national great white shark population estimate around the entire coastline of South Africa. Our results are also on their way to several international conservation societies, including WWF and the IUCN. With the study complete and the white shark community more broad and diverse than ever, the Dyer Island Conservation Trust believes now is the time for South Africa to once again make a stand and pioneer international white shark protection. So what I hope can come out of this study is ultimately to do a to change policy, to get people better understand sharks. If we want to make a difference, I think we should start making it now. I think we should start influencing policy and I think the South African government can do more to protect the great white shark than they're doing at the moment. We should really try and go over our borders, along our borders now, along the African borders and to all countries not protecting the great white shark and insist our government to put pressure on them to protect the great white sharks.